Beloved brothers and sisters, welcome to the Surefire Live Conference platform, the platform that the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Today, we want to continue with our teaching on amazing possibilities in God. And not just the teaching, today will be accompanied with ministration. We are going to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, our text remains Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Let us read it together. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Today, as we have been doing for the past four days, today being the fifth day, we have been looking at experiencing the amazing possibilities of God. That's because it's not just the, not just the hearers, but the doers. So we have been in the doing exercise. Amen. Exercising our faith in prayer, in studying the word, in fellowship, in worshiping God. I read that text again, and I just make a few points. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. We can make three key points from that, and perhaps a lot more. Number one, that there is a limit with man. There is a limit with man. So man is limited. So there is a limit. How far man can go by his own strength, by his own ability, there is a limit. There is a limit to man's ability, how far man can go. Number two, where man's ability stops, God's possibilities has just started. <laughs> Where man's ability stops, God's possibilities has just started, just started. Number three, that God's possibilities are limitless, are limitless. God's possibilities are limitless. I believe you agree with those uh, key points. So today, I want to challenge you that whatever you desire of God, you can have it. If only you can believe. I want to say that again. I say, because man is limited, where man's ability stops, that is where God just starts. And God's possibilities are limitless. Today, whatever you desire of God, you can have it. If you believe, you will have it. I say that again. I say today. Whatever you desire of God, you can have it. Can is a possibility. You can have it. Now, here the second part. If you believe, you will have it. I say you will have it in Jesus' name. I say you will have it in Jesus' name. If you believe that with me, give your agreement, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Just touching on what we have done so far. In Hebrews 11, 32 through 35, we look at several possibilities that is happenings that God Almighty has done by his grace in the lives of people. And we captured in seven headlines, dominion that is subduing kingdoms, both spiritual and physical, subduing anything around you. Some people will live in a neighborhood and they say witches and wizards are disturbing them. You bring house help into your house. Housekeeper begins to oppress you with the small demon that he or she brought into your house. Hey, where is your dominion? Subduing kingdoms, spiritual and physical. Number two, righteousness, being right with God. Number three, promises, obtaining all the promises of God. Your desires and everything God has said belongs to you, recorded in the Bible, fulfilling your purpose, receiving prosperity, promotion, healing, deliverance, including raising the dead, 
they were all mentioned in that uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to 35. Read it again. Number four, escaping danger. Number five, strength, ability to walk and perform beyond your strength. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number six, victory in battle. All battles of life, no matter how tough it is, you have victory. You have victory. Our theme for this year is greater victory. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us, who gives me, who gives you the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Number seven, victory over enemies. Oh, what, what a, a travesty for anybody to constitute himself into an enemy to the child, a child of God. <laughs> Remember what the wife and the advisors of Haman told Haman. They said to him, if Mordecai is a Jew before whom you have started to fall, <laughs> we pity you, your own has finished because you will never rise up. Victory over enemies. I decree over your life and my life and our lives, collectively as children of God, and please say an agreeing amen with me, that whosoever, we are not looking for enemies, nobody is an enemy to us, God is our Father. But anybody and anything that constitutes itself into an enemy before us, as God has ordained it to be, they shall fall before us, they shall fall before you, it shall fall before your family in the mighty name of Jesus. So we also uh, uh, studied, as the Spirit of God directed us, that to experience these seven domains, you have to engage the five W's. And in fact, beyond these seven domains, as you can expand it, to experience it, you have to engage the five W's. Number one W is will. Number two is wisdom. Number three is waiting. Number four is work. Number five is worship. And we took this into practice within the last uh, four days. Today, we want to move on to round off. So let me say here again that the grace of God is free and available to all humankind. The grace of God is free and available to all humankind. But what you do with this free grace determines what you enjoy of the grace. The grace is free and available to you, to me. But what you do, what I do, what anybody does with this free grace of God determines what he or she enjoys. For example, salvation is free. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, came as God spoke through the prophets, as God ordained and planned it. John chapter 3, verse 16, that every, everyone should know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I like adding verse 17. He said, for God did not send his Son into the world, to condemn the world, and that the world through him might be saved. That is free, whoever believes. And men have chosen not to believe. You and I who have chosen to believe, we have received the free salvation that grace has brought. All the love that drew salvation's plan, and all the grace that has brought it down to man. Now, man, would you receive this free grace? So grace is available. There are amazing possibilities in God. Every desire that you have according to the will of God, God is able to fulfill it. Every promise of God that is contained in the word of God, the scripture, the Bible, God has the power to do it. And more, he is more than willing to do it for you, to do it for me. But you need to know how to receive grace. There is a popular saying in the legal uh, system. I'm not a lawyer, so lawyers, permit me to um, quote your expression. 
They said, pardon is not pardon until he who is pardoned accepts the pardon. This is how it works with grace. You must engage. You must apply yourself. You are where you are because of what you do or don't do. I am where I am because of what I do or don't do with this available grace, with this free grace. The parish that I was in charge of, a congregation of God that I left for some years. Whenever I made this statement, I didn't know one brother who believed that his problem is because of human beings, because of somebody, because of whoever, and that people are the ones who will help him. <laughs> he took serious offense. I didn't know. But thank God, by his grace, as we continue to walk, one day he opened up to me. He said, Pastor, every time you say that thing, ah, I feel so bad. And I was so happy with him. When he finished, I said, Brother, you have to repent today. Thank God. God has helped you to say this. And he was saying this when we had some nice things shared. Yeah? <laughs> oh, like Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are those who believe even when they have not seen. They believe without seeing. You have come to the realm of faith. It's faith that operationalizes grace. And faith is action. Glory be to God. Anyway, so God helped us. And I told him, brother, you have to repent. You have to repent. You must come to the place where you know that you have to apply the grace of God. So I say this to you. You must accept 100% responsibility of making your life a marvel. God has done whatever needs to be done for you to enjoy grace. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, the grace epitome himself has come to this world and has fulfilled everything God wanted him to fulfill for humankind. He has God has raised him from the dead. He has ascended to heaven. And right now he sits at the right hand of the Father, having all power, authority, dominion over all creations of God in heaven and on earth. And in his name, we have salvation. And we have been given the power to enjoy the abundant grace of God. So you must accept 100% responsibility of making your life a marvel. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people, called out of darkness to show forth the praises of him who called us into his marvelous life. Let me say this again, that where we end in life is not the end of God. Where you end in life is not the end of God. Where I end in life is not the end of God and his grace. No, no, no. It is just how far we are willing and able to go with him. Hear me and hear me clearly. Where you end in life, where I end in life, where we end in life is not the end of God and his grace. It is just how far we are able to go with him. It is just how far we could go with him. God can go far, far, far beyond wherever we end. He is inexhaustible. He is limitless. He is omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscience, all-knowing, omnipresent. He fills everything with his spirit, even right here, right now, wherever you are. The Holy Spirit of God is with you. Would you just shout Jesus with me? You have to understand, therefore, the four dimensions of grace. I thought on that very quickly, the four dimensions of grace. You see, there is the grace of God that is available to all men. And people experience this grace in different dimensions and degrees, and yet they don't understand. And the devil cheats them a lot more because the devil will deceive people and say, come, I will give you grace. You know, I will give you help. 
like I've told us, I said, translate this grace into very simple thing that you can understand. Grace is unmerited favor, yes. And what does it mean in practical sense? It simply means the help of God. So I'm saying God will help you, the dimensions of grace in different degrees. And you can go to all the degrees and you can enjoy them. So the devil will trick people and say, I have grace also. Come, I will help you. I will help you to become rich. And that is in a dimension of achievement. So four dimensions. And they will see some things happen, but they don't see the completeness of it. So for grace to be complete, for grace to be God, grace must have these four dimensions. Number one is achievement. Number two is character. Number three is immutability. Number four is eternity. Beyond this world, beyond this life. Hallelujah. Achievement. Grace must achieve far more than your ability. It must be bigger than you. So this is where the devil cheat people and deceive the world. Because people who may have been struggling, they will go and say they were doing something, joining some cult, joining some devilish, demonic things. And then things start happening. Don't deceive yourself. It does happen. As a young person, I used to play football. And I remember once a team that I was part of. They said they want to win. So they went to see some things, some people call native doctors, witch doctors, as they call them, to do something for them. And interestingly, the other side too had gone to do their own. <laughs> so we're going for the match. And somehow God just helped me even at that young age. Whenever those things happen, I would say, I don't want to be part of the team. So they excused me. Well, we went for the game anyway. And they played. The other team, with their own or whatever, scored a goal. <laughs> and it was like the dying minute, dying minute. And I'm telling you, not theory. I told you what I watched with my eyes. And somehow, somehow, the ball went out as a throw. And the person threw the ball. As he threw the ball towards the goal, the ball was like jumping everybody's leg. This one would try to head, he would jump. This one would try to kick like that, slip ladder, a goal, 1-1. One, one. And the referee blew, it blew the goal and blew the end of game whistle. And it was a draw. Well, it could be coincidence, as some people say. Ah, but where does that carry anybody to? So achievement, when people look at this world and they say, I achieved something, look, it's all by the grace of God. You brought nothing into this world and you will take nothing out. There is nothing you have that was not given to you. It is God who made his son and his reign to shine upon the good and the bad, the righteous and the evil one. He doesn't discriminate. So God has provided principles in this world that when you practice them, you will succeed. So don't let the devil deceive you. That's why in the four W's, we put work, 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 work. Action, faith requires action. And faith action, which operationalizes grace. So achievement. Grace must achieve far more than your ability. It must be bigger than you. So the grace of God will lift you. Like I said, where man stops, God just started. God just, is just beginning. There are things in your life that when people look at you, they say, ah, is it you? <laughs> are you the name I've been hearing of? We're talking about grace. The grace that the devil offers and the world offers, or man does by himself, is temporary. It's short term, but the grace that God offers, while it takes you to a realm bigger than yourself, it will sustain it. So number two, character, character. Whatever that achievement is, the next thing to judge is the character. 
the character of that grace that manifests through you, through me, through anybody, must be righteous and must build human life and not destroy human life and must build relationship. It, it must build human life and relationship. So the character of that grace must be righteous. So if you say, yes, your own power, your own gift, your own strength, whatever it is, is achieving much for you. Yes, you may achieve, but how about the character? Perhaps some people by training are also able to refine their character. So they can still deceive a whole lot of people. They look so sanctimonious. It's only when you enter their secret place that you know that they are dangerous. But the grace of God, while helping you, helping me, helping us to achieve great things beyond what our physical ability can do, will also mold our characters to be in God's righteousness. So number two is character. Number three is immutability. Immutability. That grace must stand the test of time and trial. It must not change with time. There must be sustainability. See, when you look at this too, you can be deceived and confused. Some people start religious bodies. Let me use religious bodies to illustrate this. They start religious bodies. They say it is X, Y, Z. But because it is not founded on this grace of God, no sooner or later, they begin to change. They will change their story. They will change their, all the, the things they said they were standing for. They will continue to modify and like that, like that, like that. God does not change. God is immutable. He doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ does not change. And so that grace must stand the test of time and trial and must not change while going through those tests and trial. Oh, do you know how many children of God were born in at the stake? How many people, many times, effort, have been put in to make sure the Bible does not disseminate in the world. Some nations ban it, yet Jesus, who said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, continues to build his church, continues to disseminate his word, his truth. Buy the truth and sell it not, the Bible says. May the truth of God be with you, be with me, be with us. Now, this is the cross of the mitre, the final one. Eternity. Perhaps some are able to achieve, to do well in achievement, in character. They can even challenge the most righteous uh, Christian. That is one who is like Christ. They may also have a sustainability, definitely not immutability. They may sustain it, have some sustainability. In the sense that your legacy remains for law. If you do good, good works, that's the principle of God. Your name will be remembered. That's the principle that operates this earth. There are physical laws that operate this world. Don't be deceived by those laws. Think about this last fourth dimension. The fourth dimension of grace is eternity. And this is where Jesus sits alone. Jesus has no mates here. There is no comparison. He is the only name given amongst men under heaven by which we should be saved. There is salvation in no other. Nobody else, no other name, no other power, no religion can give salvation. Only the son of the living God, eternity, eternal life. And so that grace that you carry, what does it have to offer beyond this world? Paul said, if only in this world we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Oh, unfortunately, those who have come to Christ, pastors, ministers, general overseers have reduced the eternity that only Jesus can offer to a life of only looking at achievement. They don't even look at character anymore. 
They don't even look at immutability of God anymore. The sustainability of God's word that never changes. The truth of God that remains the same. They focus on achievement. Look, if you work hard, you will achieve great things. And more importantly, if you work hard in the grace of God, you will achieve far greater than your ability can carry you. That is the provision of God. But where Jesus is special, where we as sons and daughters of God are special, is beyond this world, beyond this life. And so this is how I often say, a Christian is one who enjoys God's grace in achievement, in character, in the immutability, sustainability, dependability of God in this world and beyond this world, enjoys eternity with God. Oh, what a life, only through Jesus. The one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Only Jesus gives eternal life. Only through Jesus can you enjoy God's eternal life. God has packaged it and put in him, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. There is salvation in no other. And so with that, brothers and sisters, I want to speak on three key things. Number one, the reality of the name of Jesus. You must come to know that God has packed in the name of Jesus, all power in heaven and on earth available to you and I to use to manifest this grace of God. The reality of the name of Jesus. Number two, which I call B, I want to talk quickly on the behaviors that limits grace and behaviors that encourages grace to manifest. So quickly, the reality of the name of Jesus, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, because after this meeting, and as we pray today, the grace of God will overtake your life in the name of Jesus. You will manifest that grace. People will look at your life and say, is it you? Is it you? What happened to you? Philippians chapter 2, let's start reading from verse 5 very quickly. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not count, consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. He became obedient to God's will. He humbled himself under God, he submitted to the Father's will and died on the cross. Nine, hear this. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Did you hear that? He has been given a name above all names, every other name, every name in heaven and on earth. Oh, let's uh, move quickly. Jesus, while he was here physically on earth, was teaching the disciples this truth and invariably teaching all of us. In John chapter 14, verses 12 and 14, there Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. He who believes, what is the criteria for doing this work? Believe. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Greater works. The amazing possibilities, the amazing happenings, the amazing manifestations of God. Remember those seven headlines that we captioned. Dominion, righteousness, promises, escaping danger, strength, unusual strength, 
extraordinary strength, victory in battle, victory over all enemies. He said, greater works than this shall we do. 13, and whatever you ask in my name, how do we do these works? By asking in whose name? Share it with me in whose name? Type it with me in whose name? The name of Jesus. In whose name? The name of Jesus. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus sits at the right hand of God, interceding for us day and night. He doesn't sleep. Oh, he's not like you. He's not like me. His eyes, they don't go dim. They don't close. There is no weariness with him. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipresent. He is here. He said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. Jesus is here. And in the name of Jesus, whatever you ask, you receive it. Whatever I ask, I receive it. The only qualification is what? Believe. Have you believed in the Son of God? Now, come to the reality of the power in the name of Jesus. You know, many of us have used the name of Jesus as an embellishment in our prayer. Yes, when we pray, we close with amen. I mean, with the name of Jesus, that's the right thing to do. We only pray in the name of Jesus. However, do you believe in the Son of God? That the Father has packed everything in heaven and on earth in him and in his name, we receive whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, even right now. So shall it be unto you who has connected upon this program, whatever you ask, the Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus will do it. The power of God is available and present and responds instantly to the name of Jesus to do whatever those who believe, ask to be done. 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Quickly, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10. Jesus, you know, he's not a theorist. He's always practical. So immediately he demonstrated this. In Luke chapter 10, he left the 12 disciples. So you won't say, ah, these ones were special. Luke chapter 10, he said, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others, 70 others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And he told them to go, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Hear what they reported back. Jump with me to verse 17. And 18 and 19, the scripture we often quote, but we don't pay attention to the reality of the power that has been given to us. There is no other name given amongst men under heaven by which we must be saved, except whose name shall it with me? Type it with me, Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Then the 70 return with joy, with joy. Somebody is going to return with joy today. That problem, that challenge that has defiled all prayer today in the name of Jesus. I command it to go. I command it to go. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Say, and I bring amen with me. And the 70 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. They are subject to us by who? by your power, by your shouting, by your screaming. But again, don't, don't, once the power is in you, you will shout too anyway. <laughs> Amen. So don't judge me by shouting. I'm going to shout. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So it is by the name of Jesus. So they said that even the demons are subject to us in your name. Look at what Jesus answered them. 18 and 19. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority. Behold, I give you what? The right to use this name. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who be that devil that can harm you? Raise your voice right now and use your authority in the name of Jesus. Then speak forth in the name of Jesus. Say, by the authority that has been given to me in the name of Jesus, I trample upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over all power of the enemy. And I decree and declare over my life and my family that nothing shall by any means hurt me. No dream in the night. No gathering in the night. No gathering in the spirit. No gathering in the physical. No agreement of men. No of angels. No of spirit. No of powers. No agreement whatsoever that there may be can harm me. In the name of Jesus. Speak again and say, I am under the authority of Jesus. The authority in the name of Jesus. Only the will and the counsel of God shall stand in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, I'll read it on, please. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The eternity is the biggest and most important thing. The greatest need of man is eternal life. It is not food. It is not drinking. It is not anything in this physical world. It is what happens to you beyond this world. It is eternal life. And only Jesus gives eternal life. So Jesus said, yes, these things are great. You will enjoy it while here in this world. But more than that, rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. You have eternal life through Jesus. 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father. Can you see that? Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Reveal them to you and I, the big men of this world that are going into our court, going to, into all manner of things to achieve things that God has already provided for them to achieve freely by the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It's been hidden from them, but yet it's been revealed to you, revealed to, uh, to me. Oh, glory be to God. So Jesus rejoiced. Let's jump. But look at what he says in verse 23. He said, then he turned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see these things you see. I tell you, blessed are you who hear this thing that you are hearing now. Blessed are you who receive this key of the reality of the name of Jesus. Here, what he said in verse 24. He said, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see. Oh, wonderful. Ha! The prophets of old, those mighty men, they had longed and thought that Jesus will come in their time. That they will see this kind of power being given to mankind. That in the name of the Son of God, you receive whatever you believe God for. Glory be to God. He said, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you are hearing right now and have not heard it. Beloved, what are you going to do with what you have heard? So I want to round off with Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And couple with Acts chapter 3. Because you know, this came from Acts chapter 3. So in Acts chapter 4, the Bible says it very simply. Of Peter, James, and John raising up the lame man that was at the gate called Beautiful. Why not I go and start from there so I don't come back? Acts chapter 3 from verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus. In whose name? Shout it with me. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. That man that was healed. Then Acts chapter 4, because the uh, religious people, that's all how I want to call, they began to disturb Peter, James, and John, say, by whose power are you doing this thing? Yeah, that's uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 7. So Peter then answered in verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with what? The Holy Spirit said to them, Ruler 
of the people. Ruler of the people and elders of Israel. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you. Hold! Oh! Come to verse 12. He said, no, is there salvation in any other? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Read that with me. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Except whose name? The name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. The name has been given to us. We are under authority. The authority in the name of Jesus and whatever we say in that name, ask in that name, we'll receive it. So, to make this your reality to, of manifesting the grace of God upon your life, you must shun negative behaviors. Fear, doubt, laziness, complacency are the four key ones I want to mention. And then the positive behaviors you must put up. Courage. What is courage? Courage is to confront your fear. You may fear, but act against it. Number two, faith. Number three, boldness. Number four, perseverance. Number five, make effort. Make effort. Efforts. Make attempt. Try it out. You want to pray. Oh, glory be to God. Ha, I want to pray for salvation. You want to give your life to Jesus as you have heard. If you believe this grace is available and the name of Jesus is available, the reality of the name of Jesus, make it a reality in your life. Or make it like you sleep and wake up that you know that you, you, when you sleep, you will wake up because God has ordained it so, except the life is taken out of you. You are no more in this world. As long as you are in this life, in this world, let the name of Jesus, the power in that name, the reality of the potency of the name of Jesus be your reality. For God has put everything in him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door, the access to everything in God. And so raise your voice with me and pray. You want to give your life to Jesus. You're still struggling with sin. Tell him, Lord Jesus, I thank you for you died for me. You died for me. You shed your blood for me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me your only begotten son. Now, Lord, forgive me my sins and wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sin and I forsake them. And now, Father, give me your Holy Spirit and change my life forever. And write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You are saved. <laughs> it's that simple. Just believe God. Believe him. Number two, we want to pray for healing. As you heard what Jesus sent the people to do. So you are sick or you have any sick person. Right now, just put your hand on your forehead with me. As we pray, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Now, let that stripes of Jesus that healed you, that healed me, prevail in your life now against every form of sickness and disease and every form of infirmity. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have been oppressed in any way by any power of the devil. As I told you, one of the clearest signs is when you start having confusing dreams. You dream, you all see all manner of things. Some of you, you dream, but you don't remember, and you just take it carelessly. There are just some things around you that you need to get rid of. And the reason is they weigh you down. And of course, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. For some people, 
it is the thing that helped them. So they enjoy it. You remember the girl that was a sorcerer that brought much gain to the master. So for some people, it's your own grace. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you will end up, uh, you won't end up with God. Let's just put it that way. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why you must give up that small grace or a bigger grace. God is the biggest grace. In fact, God doesn't have a limit, but even the devil has a limit. I mean, there are people who have risen up and they say that ah, devil gave them money and they showed money, but within a short time they died, useless, dead, and are gone and forgotten and have lost eternal eternity. You need to gain eternity and still enjoy the grace in this world. That's what God is offering you through Jesus Christ. And so lift up your voices with me and cry to God and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ has redeemed me. Thank you because you have delivered me from the power of darkness, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. You have delivered me from the power of darkness and have translated me to the kingdom of the Son of your love, Jesus Christ. I am under the authority of Christ, under God. In the name of Jesus, I cast out every devil, every demon, every power, every serpent, every scorpion, whatever oppression of the devil has been operating in my life. In the name of Jesus, I command you, cease, stop now. I cast you out. Go and return no more. In the name of Jesus. And now speak this word, say, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I use that blood to seal whatever access the devil had into my life. I use the blood of Jesus that has paid the price for my redemption, and I seal that access forever. Heavenly Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Next, we're going to pray following that for the Holy Spirit. Raise your voices with me and say, Father, go. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus, almighty God. Anoint me with your Holy Spirit. The grace and the power to do your will now, now. All you have kept for me to do in life. Anoint me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to do your will, O oh God. Now say, Holy Spirit of God, I depend on you. Manifest your fruit, your fruit of righteousness, the character of a Christian, of a child of God in me. Manifest your power, your gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Use me to do the greater works that Jesus Christ has promised. Use me to heal the sick, to cleanse the leper, to cast out devils to raise the dead, to wrought miracles, signs, and wonders. And Lord Jesus, in your name, let my life glorify you as you do your mighty works through me, through us. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Two more prayer. A second to the last now is your own prayer. So what did you bring before God today? We're going to take another five minutes, brothers and sisters, to pray. Because it doesn't take long when the authority in the name of Jesus is available. Jesus does his work. The name of Jesus does the work of God. Glory be to God. And so your own prayer now, we've been praying over the will of God, the wisdom of God. We've been praying over the, 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 the in, uh, waiting to receive instruction, guidance, direction, strategy. I'm praying for strength to work. And we came into worship yesterday, breaking into the presence, the very holy of holies. What have you? And you were to set your success goals on the seven dimension and beyond. What are your own? Now raise it to God and tell him, Father, I present my goals and desires to you. In the name of Jesus. My Father, bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus, I ask, let all these my goals and desires in life be fulfilled. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. 
pray for yourself, pray and extend it to your family, extend it to your family. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let all these my goals, I have mine here beside me, let all these my goals and desires, oh God Almighty, come to fulfillment. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all my goals and desires, oh God, come to fulfillment. In the name of Jesus, I present them to you, Father. I present them to you, oh God. In the area of achievement, the area of character, in the area of sustainability, sustainability, legacy, the area of eternal life, in the spiritual, Lord God Almighty, in all realms, let all my goals that I have set, oh God, to please you with my life, to glorify you, make me a praise indeed, make my wife a praise indeed, make my children a praise indeed, unto you, oh most high God. Make my brothers and sisters, everyone that is connected upon this platform, a praise unto you, Father God. Answer all their prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Bring your prayer to a close. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to agree on this one before we pray the final one which is praying for the year 2022. Oh, glory be to God. Let us pray. We want to agree. And let's start by saying an agreeing amen. Hallelujah. Say an agreement amen with me. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, by our amen, we agree together that you, the amen God, will perform all that we have asked. We have written down our goals, our desires, our success goals, our amazing possibility, possibilities, goals, and desires, and we have presented them before you. Summarize in two words that one, Lord, you will make us all a praise unto you. Number two, that you will make us all, God Almighty, to enjoy eternity with you. And for all the other specific things we have set before you, that in this life, we will achieve greatness by your grace and honor you. Heavenly Father, we agree that you will do all this in that name. That name you have appointed, that name you have chosen, that name you have given to us, that whatever we ask and agree in the name of Jesus, we have it. The name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In Jesus' name we have agreed. In Jesus' name. Name we have praised. Amen.